I'm thankful to Harmon India for giving me this opportunity uh, to speak on uh, oral semaglutide. Diabetes treatment has undergone a sea change in the last two decades. From, if you look back at uh, origin of oral drugs, way back in 1945-48, when we had first sulfonurias, we had first biogonides in 1960. Thereafter, a lot of other sulfonuria came, sulfonurias came, glipizide, glyclazide, glimipiride. Then we had DP4 inhibitors. Then there was an explosion of more pathways of glycemic control. And one of these key elements has been GLP-1 receptor analogs. In fact, we are bombarding with many medications for glycemic control. And the most recent one has been semaglutide. We had been practically craving for a drug which is oral, effective, in reducing the HbA1c to as much as possible to normal glycemic, to avoid hypoglycemia. But in addition, this is not sufficient. We want to have weight loss because majority of patients with type 2 diabetes are overweight or obese. In addition, we want to have drugs which are cardiac safe. We crave for a drug which is beneficial to the heart, kidney, and, uh, and for other micro and macrovascular disorders coming out of diabetes. <clears throat> Oral semaglutide has a recent wonderful addition to our armamentorium to achieve majority of these goals. And I would go through the place of oral superglutide into this journey of dilution. This is a financial disclosure for this lecture. I shall go through this agenda of role of GLP-1 receptor analogs in the management of type 2 diabetes. Finding the new error. <clears throat> Profiting targets with oral semaglutide and panic management in routine clinical practice. What's the place of oral semaglutide in our clinical practice? We have been craving for an ideal anti diabetic drugs. Majority of our patients start with type 2 diabetes, they do have HbA1c between 8 to 9. We want to control the glycemia. But we don't want hypoglycemia. So it's a balance we want to strike to have reduce the blood glucose levels to desirable <coughs> level of as recommended by various societies like 6.5% or 7%. But we want to avoid the hypoglycemia. We want to have a beneficial effect <coughs> on the weight. We don't want to gain weight. We want to weight remain stable or and more importantly, we want to reduce the weight. We need to have off-target effects like a beneficial cardiac effects and, uh, and, and renal effects. So this is what we want in an, any ideal anti diabetic drugs. What we expect from a new drug, we should bring the HbA1c to 7%. They should be cardiac safe. They should be able to give us good glycemic control with the low risk of hypoglycemia. There should be no weight gain or significantly if you're going to weight loss, it's a real big bonus for us. We want to have minimum side effects and, uh, and beneficial effects on kidney and, and the heart. 
GLP-1 is a uh, GLP-1 has got a myriad role in the human body. As we know that there are 13 or 14 mechanism of causing hyperglycemia in human body, in which almost six mechanisms are dealt by GLP-1. In pancreas, it reduces glucagon, increase insulin by increasing the beta cell function, and it increases the insulin biosynthesis. It is the GI acting in the GIT track. It is the GLP-1 increases natiuresis in the kidneys and is nephroprotective. It increases the insulin sensitivity. Just hold on for a while. GLP-1 increases insulin sensitivity. In the liver, it reduces hepatic glucose production, increases hepatic insulin sensitivity, <clears throat> decreases de novo ripogenesis, and reduces steatosis. In heart, it is cardioprotective and provides vascular protection. In the brain, it reduces the food intake, increases satiety, and reduces the body weight. So this is how GLP-1 has got multifaceted action in reducing the hypoglycemia, but in addition, GLP-1 uh, reduces hypoglycemia as well as it induces the weight loss. There's a lot of experience with GLP-1 receptor analogs now. If the person is on two oral drugs and we compare the effect of adding GLP-1 receptor analogs, versus adding more oral antidiabetic drugs or insulin in type 2 diabetes when these we compare these two uh, these when we compare addition of glp1 receptor analogs to addition of oral antidiabetic drugs or insulin type 2 diabetes so already on two oral drugs are not well controlled and when we look at how it glp1 favors our diabetes management we look at HbA1c target less than 7%. We look at weight outcomes. We look at change in the oral antidiabetic drugs consumption, like a pill load, whether we can discontinue or not. And then we look at a composite outcome of all those three points, HbA1c target, weight outcome, and change in oral antidiabetic drugs. When we look at the beneficial effect of GLP-1 other oral antidiabetic or insulin, we realize that in all the patients, the A1C target is better, less than seven percent is better attained in people who have got GLP, who are on GLP receptor analogs. It is much better in the people who are adherent to the diet and exercise and the and the drug therapy. The weight outcome is significantly better with GLP receptor analogs. As compared to other oral antidiabetic drugs, no weight gain in more patients, almost twice the number of patients. No weight gain in the adherent patients, much more than that, 2.7. The odd ratio is 2.7, and more than 3% of weight reduction in GLP-1 receptor analogs, almost 70, uh, 72%. Uh, uh, odd ratio 1.72. There is a reduction in the uh, oral antidiabetic drugs, uh, and in fact, one or more the antidiabetic drugs can be discontinued more in the people who are receiving oral, uh, uh, who are receiving GLP-1 receptor analogs. When we talk of composite outcome, that's a combination of HbA1c less than seven percent, no weight gain, happening in more people GLP-1 receptor analogs. A1C less than 7% and uh, discontinuation of one or more antidiabetic drugs happening in more or ratio of 2. A1C less than 7%, no weight gain and discontinuation of one or more antidiabetic drugs discontinuation, more patients or ratio of 1.87. GLP-1 receptor analogs goes over all other antidiabetic drugs or insulin 
इंटर टू डायबिटीज डिस्कंफर्टिंग फॉर बोथ एंड द डॉक्टर एक्चुअली and there is a global internet survey of around 1200 physicians and they said if you are giving too many injections it leads to poor adherence to the treatment patients and almost 26% of these physicians agree that injectable therapy leads to the poor adherence to the treatment uh, in diabetic subjects so what do the patient prefer actually this is extremely important to maintain the compliance and adherence on long term basis we need to increase a patient convenience we have been doing with the vice and syringes for injectables they are engineered pen injectors we have a very good pen but still it's not preferred by this and the what the most important people want to take uh, as as far as possible to have a oral medication form now when we talk of changing paradigms of treatment of type 2 diabetes we have got old simple diet which has really pioneered a new era of the treatment of type 2 diabetes we need to give it orally because what we have been desiring so far in the last 7 or 8 decades to have a oral medication which is <coughs> convenient to take they are safe and non invasive which can improve the patient's compliance so that we can start this treatment <clears throat> in the early course of type 2 diabetes and we can address the barrier associated subcutaneous uh, medicine in administration the oral administration of peptide is really challenging because they undergo once they take uh, once once they, <coughs> once they in the stomach <coughs> they undergo enzymatic degradation because of low ph in the stomach fluids and there are a lot of proteolytic enzymes there is a limited probability <coughs> through the uh, gi epithelium there is a low oral viability uh, in fact gl precursor analogs are observed only less than 0.01 percent. So this leads to the <coughs> limited absor absorption. Semaglutide is basically a peptide which has got a 94 percent homology to the human GLP-1 with a half life of one week. <coughs> is a large molecule <coughs> with the displacement of with the genetic engineering. there is a change of the amino acids at position 8 26 and 34 at 26 there is a spacer and c18 fatty di acid chain to the lysine to provide the strong binding to the albumin <coughs> sorry <coughs> the <coughs> amino acid substitution in the position 8 is important because it protects against the dp4 degradation amino acid substitution at position 34 is preventing the c18 fatty di acid binding at the wrong side and therefore <coughs> oral semaglutide is a major discovery because this can be given in a pill actually <coughs> <I'm> so <sorry>. sorry <coughs> semaglutide comes in a oral formulation it is actually co-formulated with the absorption and answer as snack this is semaglutide which is a glp1 analog and it is a most effective one tested till date With a long half life of one week, 
it is combined with a snack which is which is a large name actually which is sodium 8 to hydroxy benzoyl amino caprylate it is as absorption enhancer when this is combined basically it uh, this snack is promotes the absorption of semaglutide across the gastric epithelium and therefore improves the oral viability and when we combine it together it in a pill it can be used in management of hypoglycemia so this is the first in the class oral glp1 receptor analog which is a new way of management of diabetes it is possible because of this absorption enhancer at snack because its viability is still 1% but this is mitigated by one week half life and once daily dosing there are several treatment doses and the patient complies with the dosing conditions oral semaglutide has undergone a large pre marketing studies which involves 24 clinical pharmacology trials one phase 2 trial and 10 <clears throat> phase 3a trials in which almost <coughs> 9543 patients has been enrolled <coughs> and almost 5700 patients has been exposed to oral semaglutide <coughs> these are the uh, pioneer phase 3a clinical program which involves pioneer one trial in which semaglutide oral semaglutide has been compared to the placebo it has been used in the studies comparing with the oral anti diabetic drugs in pioneer 2 is the comparison with azl2 inhibitors pioneer 3 is comparison with the dp4 inhibitors pioneer 4 is comparison with uh, its comparison with gl2 receptor analog <coughs> or placebo pioneer 7 is flexible dose adjustment versus dp4 inhibitor with extension phase that pioneer 8 is act as basically add on to insulin in 51 indian subjects pioneer 5 is in the subjects who have a real impairment pioneer 6 is basically cardiovascular outcome trial in which 201 indian subjects were included now the japanese trial pioneer 9 based trial which is comparing oral semaglutide with liraglutide and placebo Pioneer time trial is basically comparison of oral semaglutide with gel plus analogs dioglutide, <coughs> and there is ongoing trial which is known as SOW or Superity CO2 trial in uh, is a CO2 trial in which 788 Indian subjects are enrolled. So overall, semag oral semaglutide has undergone extensive clinical studies <coughs> in the 3A clinical program. when we are looking at efficacy of any anti diabetic drug we are looking at hba1c we are looking at proportion of the patients who achieve a1c less than 7% we look at the weight loss uh, of uh, of certain degree like less than 5% we look at the composite of weight loss with hba1c reduction and so these are the parameters we study and i shall go through all these slides Uh, one by one <coughs> when we look at a change in the a1c at the end of treatment and in this we have got a pioneer one trial pioneer two three four five seven eight trial all of these trial are long term trials of uh, extending from 26 weeks to 78 weeks all these trials had hb a1c based on a1c of 8 to 8.3% and when we look at a change in the hb a1c when we compare in pioneer one trial as compare the placebo with 3 mg 7 mg and 14 mg oral semaglutide as compared to the placebo the reduction hb a1c is 0.8% to 3 mg 1.3% with 7 mg and 1.5% with 14 mg when we compare the empagliflozin empagliflozin gives a reduction hb a1c of 0.8% but 14 mg semaglutide <clears throat> gives a reduction of 1.3%. As compared to the sitagliptin, semaglutide has got much better reduction of 
HbA1c as compared to cetagliptin with 40 mg it is reducing by 1.1% as compared to cetagliptin 0.4%. As compared to liraglutide, liraglutide reduces HbA1c of 0.9% while 40 mg semaglutide reduces HbA1c by 1.2%. In renal trial, semaglutide reducing by 1.1%, while placebo only 0.1%. In the FLEX trial, again, 40 mg of uh, semaglutide reducing by 1.1% against cetagliptin 0.7%. The most important here is insulin. When you compare with the insulin, actually, it gives a reduction of, uh, when we add insulin, uh, placebo or, or semaglutide, the semaglutide gives a reduction of 1.2 percent pretty huge so <clears throat> across the all these pioneer trials oral semaglutide achieved hba1c reduction up to of 1.5 percent now when we look at a proportion of subjects achieving hba1c less than seven percent at the end of treatment in all these studies from pioneer 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, there is a significant larger number of people uh, achieving uh, less than 7% with a dose of either 3 mg, 7 mg, or 40 mg as compared to placebo. 72% of subjects achieved when we are comparing with empirically frozen pioneer 2 trial, only 47% achieved HVMC less than 7%. But seventy-two percent achieved HbA1c with semaglutide fourteen milligrams. <coughs> Similarly, <coughs> uh, as compared to cetagliptin, more number of patients achieved like fifty percent, uh, fifty percent, and fifty-two percent with semaglutide seventeen forty milligram, as compared to only thirty-nine percent with cetagliptin. The important thing is if you look at liraglutide, lira, it is Pattern with semaglutide as compared to liraglutide, 69% versus 63%. When we again of renal uh, subjects, when we compare the uh, placebo therapy, it is 64% with semaglutide, 40 milligrams. <coughs> In the flex trial, 63% semaglutide versus cetagliptide, 28%. Now, when we look at with insulin actually 64 percent achieved a1c less than seven percent when we are comparing with the insulin actually now if the hb a1c is based on a1c is more than nine percent so this is a post hoc analysis of 14 million semaglutide <clears throat> in these post hoc analysis of pioneer one two three four five seven eight trials all these trials it gives you a reduction of more than 2% in all the studies, actually. 2.6%, 2%, 2.2%, 2.2%, 2.1%. So all these studies gives, uh, if the SBOVC is more than 9%, gives an A1C reduction of more than uh, uh, 2%, actually. And in fact, it goes up to 2.6%. Uh, maximum is 2.6% when we compare it to the placebo. Now, another important aspect of diabetes treatment is change in the body with the end of the treatment, actually. And one can realize from this graph that all these studies, there's a negative, there's a lot of weight loss as compared to the comparator molecule. 4.1 kilograms uh, reduction with semaglutide as compared to 1.5 uh, kilograms in pioneer one trial where the semaglutide was compared to the placebo, actually. <clears throat> much more effective than ampagliflozin, 4.7 kilograms with semaglutide 14 milligrams, as come to ampagliflozin, 25 milligrams, 3.8 kilograms. Similarly, with cetagliptin, much, much better weight loss with all the doses of semaglutide. Better than liraglutide in causing weight loss, 5 kilograms versus 3.1 kilograms uh, with liraglutide. In renal studies, more weight loss. Here in flax trial compared to cetagliptin, battery weight loss 2.9 kilograms and with insulin 4.3 kilograms. So there's significant reduction of weight loss almost close to the 5 kilograms when you're using oral semaglutide. <clears throat> now, when you look at 
proportion of patients achieving body weight loss of 5 kg or more in all these trials more proportion of subjects achieved uh, more proportion of subjects achieved weight loss of more than 5% as compared to the comparative molecule <coughs> Now, when we combine these two, the HMO destruction of more than one percent and body weight loss of more than five percent, again, semaglutide or a semaglutide scores better than the comparative molecule in all these trials, like Pioneer one, two, three, four, five, and eight trials. <clears throat> Now, what is the odd of achieving HMO reduction of one percent or more and body weight loss of five percent or more when we compare the placebo? The odd ratio is 9.5. That's huge, actually. As compared to abagliflozin, 2.5, citagliptin, 4, liraglutide, 3, placebo, 19. Again, pine five trial placebo, 16, and in pine eight trial, 55. So you have got a better odd of achieving this kind of SBA1C reduction and weight loss of more than five percent. Now another question comes that is this drug is cardiac safe? And Pioneer Six actually is a large cardiovascular event-driven trial <clears throat> in which population of 50 uh, the subjects who were included were the age of 50 years or more with established cardiovascular disease, or subjects who were age was 60 years or more with at least one CV risk factors. The primary outcome was cardiovascular death, non-fatal MI. Or non-fatal stroke. This study had a high retention and follow-up rate to the tune of 99.7 percent. Completing the study, and the vital status was known in the 100 percent of the subjects. It established cardiac safety. Actually, there was a 21 percent reduction, non-significant risk reduction versus a placebo. The HbA1c in body weight was significantly reduced as compared to the placebo. And when you look at this, the Kaplan meal. Graph. If you look at time since randomization, oral uh, the patients with the events was significantly lower with the oral semaglutide as compared to the placebo, and therefore as compared to placebo for uh, for cardiac safety, <coughs> it is both uh, cardiac safe though it is not superior to placebo, but this is not is significantly for non inferiority. Pioneer six trial uh, is another. This uh, it shows that it is uh, mean AVC reduction is significantly more with the oral semaglutide as compared to the placebo. The weight reduction was significantly more. Mean body weight was significantly lower with oral semaglutide as compared to the placebo. <coughs> Now we had injectable semaglutide in which there was a sustained six trial and sustained six trial. Which showed the first maze happening, and there's a hazard ratio of 20, uh, some 0.74 means reduction of almost 26 percent of primary outcome. In Pioneer Six, it was a 21 percent uh, reduction in the uh, primary outcome. But when we combine both these two trials, Pioneer Six and Sustain Six trial, there was a significant uh, cardiac beneficial effect to the tune of. 24 percent or hazard ratio of 0.76 percent. So, whole cardiovascular outcome data says that when we combine the results of oral and subcutaneous uh, semaglutide, it fares better uh, in the terms of cardiovascular. Almost 24 percent risk reduction versus compared to molecule. Just a few words about sustained six trial and pioneer six trial. Sustained six trial was was. Both event and time driven, while pioneer six trial was only event driven. There were more events in the sustained six trial, two fifty four CV events, while pioneer six had one thirty seven events. Mean observation period was two point one years in sustained six, while it was sixteen months in pioneer six. And hazard ratio of mean reduction of point uh, point seven four percent versus point seven nine percent with uh, with pioneer six trials. <coughs> So sustained six uh, trial was superior for mean reduction, while pioneer six trial was non-inferior for cardiovascular safety. But when we combine it together, the results are uh, uh, is having 
uh, significant reduction in the cardiovascular outcome. So when we summarize orosimigro type, it is bad in the terms of H1C reduction, it is superior to ampagliflozin, cetagliprin, and liraglutide. The weight loss property is better as compared to cetagliprin, liraglutide, and ampagliflozin. And end of all these trials, orosimigrotide demonstrated significant greater reduction in the HbA1c and weight reduction versus, versus uh, as compared to cetagliprin, ampagliflozin, and liraglutide. It is cardiovascular safe and it was well tolerated and the, all the side work profile was as uh, good as uh, or as consistent as GLP-1, the other GLP-1 receptor analog. So the important thing is, this: it's efficacious even when it is given early in the therapy, late in the therapy or regardless of renal or hepatic impairment. So, <clears throat> how do we place uh, the, the orosimplutide in clinical practice? Orosimplutide has a particular way of taking it in the morning. It should be taken up when you wake up in the morning. There should be no food intake for about six to eight hours before taking this tablet. It should be taken with empty stomach, with water, which should be less than 120 ml while you're taking this tablet, it can be lower, but should not be higher. Because if the amount of water you are taking with the tablet is more than 120 uh, ml, then it is going to compromise the efficacy because of poor absorption. Just to remember, only less than 1% of these oral drugs is absorbed in stomach, even when you're taking it properly. You have to wait for 30 minutes, should not take any other food or beverages or even water and one should not take any other oral medications. So it is a graded doses actually because of the potential side effects of nausea, vomiting. So one starts with a 3 milligram as a starting dose given for one month which can increase to the 7 milligrams which is actually treatment dose actually uh, for two months and if the glycemic control is not desirable then one can increase to 14 milligrams. <clears throat> this is important that if you are missing a dose, do not take the dose in that day. You can just take the regular dose next day morning. <clears throat> so, how do the major side effect of uh, GLP analogs are basically nausea and how to manage the nausea? In fact, only 80 to 90 percent people don't experience any significant nausea. Actually, it happens in 10 to 20 percent. <clears throat> so, discontinuation of orosimigrotide is really uncommon, and it happens only during the early stages of uh, dose escalation. But if it's needed, if the nausea is very very significant, then treatment can be stopped until the adverse events are resolved. They should encourage to resume once adverse events have ceased. One can. Just stop it for 21 days and then re-escalate from the lower dose. So a little amount of bit of counseling is required to these patients and they, they need to be in the constant touch because everybody is, every doc, every patient is scared of a lot of nausea actually. So they should be reassured and one can manage with the very simple measures. So who is the ideal patient for initiation or a singular type? The sub patients who are taking one or more anti hyperglycemic agents, including metformin, with adequate glycemic control, and this can be added as the appropriate second line setting after the failure of metformin. The patients for whom the weight loss is really beneficial because it gives a superior weight reduction as compared to comparators, and these are reasonable to consider for patients who benefit from the weight loss. Patient in whom hypoglycemia is concerned. The chance of hypoglycemia is as good as a placebo. So, <clears throat> and it is similar, the risk of hypoglycemia is similar to ampagliflozin, cetagliprin, or other GLP receptor analogs. Patients who are already taking injectable GLP receptor analogs uh, and not reaching glycemic targets, they can be initiated on oral simulotide. So, the most important thing is that. This is really, in our clinical practice, I found oral 
much more uh, acceptable as compared to anterior GLP-1 analogs, despite its cost actually. So the people and people tend to avoid the injectables. So this is a very good uh, uh, option when you think of GLP-1 analogs in your treatment actually. Patients who have an established cardiovascular disease or at a high risk of CV uh, risk, uh, they can be given uh, this oral semaglutide. The subjects who have got a renal or hepatic impairment, uh, they can be given osimilotide because there is no dose adjustment required in this situation. In older patients also, uh, this can be used because age does not appear to affect the efficacy or safety of oral semaglutide. <clears throat> now, what is the potential uh, role of oral semaglutide and international treatment guidelines? We know that metformin is, is a very standard uh, first-line therapy for this. If the patient has high, high CV risk, one can, in, uh, one can initiate, <coughs> one can initiate <coughs> very specific drugs depending on whether they have got CV risk or heart risk of heart failure or CKD. If the CV risk is there, then one should check the renal functions. And here, one should use the agents which has got a proven cardiovascular benefit like GLP-1 receptor analogs and SJ2 inhibitors provided <coughs> uh, if EGFR is adequate and GLP-1 receptor analogs are inappropriate. If your one has got a heart failure CKD, one should check the renal functions and one should initiate the drugs uh, which has got proven cardiovascular benefit like SGT2 inhibitors, if the EGFR is adequate, or GLP receptor analogs, if SGT2 inhibitors are inappropriate. <coughs> Patients who are at low risk of CV, uh, low risk of cardiovascular events, the main concern is control HbA1c and control weight. And again, the recommended is GLP receptor analogs or SGT2 inhibitors or DP4 inhibitors or thiazolidone or sulfuric if cost an issue. And <coughs> when you're thinking of weight, GLP analogs, as you do inhibitors with proven efficacy loss programs. So, oral semaglutide is reducing your A1C and body weight, and it is much better than citagliptine, amphagliflozin, and lirotide. <coughs> now, again, when we talk of uh, the subjects who have got a high CV risk, in fact, it is cardiovascular C when it is under standard care. There is no restriction of oral regardless of renal functions, and there, but however, it is not recommended for end stage renal disease. So, as we have, uh, so oral semaglutide reduces A1C or uh, body weight, and it reduces insulin dose when we are uh, using the insulin for glycemic control. So, I summarize here is that GLP reversal analogs are among the most effective medications for type 2 diabetes which have been shown to reduce HbA1c, body weight, composite outcome, and even pill burden. This is extremely important. It is basically a break, uh, scientific breakthrough, an innovation to bring cases of analogs in convenient oral formulation. Across the globe, Pioneer Trials has shown the efficacy of oral semaglutide in reducing the A1c of up to 1.5. 5% and weight reduction of, of up to 5 kilograms. Oral semaglutide has been found to reduce A1C more than an azimut inhibitors, DP4 inhibitors, when added to 1 to 2 oral drugs, and reduces HbA1C when added to insulin therapy. In patients with baseline A1C more than 9%, oral semaglutide results in A1C reduction up to 2.6%. Oral semaglutide has got a proven cardiovascular safety in the Pioneer 6 trials with strong potential for cardiovascular death <coughs> and other causes, death reduction, and a larger also as sole trial to validate the long term cardiovascular benefit of oral semaglutide is ongoing. Efficacy of oral semaglutide is, is effective whether it is given early in the treatment or late in the treatment, and it can be given regardless of renal. And hepatic impairment. <clears throat> Thank you very much for patient hearing. Uh, uh, I'm sorry that I could not contact you physically, 
because of my uh, some prior commitments uh, visiting some uh, conference in bombay uh, we got a have got a lecture actually uh, um, i would be happy to take the comments and questions but unfortunately this is a recorded uh, lecture so i cannot answer and my colleagues and uh, moderators would be uh, ready to answer your questions and uh, and really learn from your comments thank you very much for patient hearing thank you very much and have a good evening thank you very much person